so, so God, so, so God, so, so God, God is stack, God is stack, God is stack, good God, that's God. Welcome to Gotti Stacks. With Ben Simmons. What's on the menu, Benny boy? Here comes the rain again. Falling on my head like a memory. Falling on my head like a true emotion. Oh, oh, oh. Can you hear it? Eurythmics. Classic. Synth band. 80s. Man. So deep in the synth these days. God, I've been saying that for years, but it's true. I can't get out of it. I am lost at sea. Lost in an 80s new wave synth sea. Yes. Here in Portland, Oregon, it's raining right now. It's a big downpour out of nowhere. It was sunny about 25 minutes ago. Clouds roll in. The rain starts coming. Um... Something kind of nice about it, kind of zen-like, if you will. Um, calming, relaxing. Oh, I was outside, looking at the birds, fluttering this way and that. Um, but none of this has anything to do with the subject of this podcast. Um, it's completely random, in fact. But, you know, I've just, something's been just itching my ass for a while now. No, not that. I don't have some sort of rash. No, but something's been chafing, chafing me. And let me tell you what it is. It is this blatant disregard and disrespect of one of the all-time great round ball rockers of our time. One of the greatest big men. Perhaps the greatest. No, I'm not going to say that. I don't really believe that, but you know, he is in the top three greatest big men of all time, okay? There's a lot of things you can say bad about this guy, and there's a lot of good things you can say too, but let me tell you something, the bad things are stupid, and the good things aren't, (laughs) in my humble opinion. No, I mean, listen... Should I introduce the, should I talk should I actually say who I'm talking about? No, not yet. This guy has won I mean a bake almost a baker's dozen championships. Uh he is the embodiment of an NBA champion in every sense of the word. The issue is and uh some people have a good point here, is the competition he faced during his era and I think I think people are glossing over the crux of why I think he's underrated at this point is people are glossing over the Hall of Fame talent he did face and did dominate. I am talking about and I think by now you know because you clicked on the episode and I'm sure his name was on the episode when you clicked on the podcast episode. I'm talking about the one and only Bill, 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 Bill. Russell, 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 Russell. <laughs> yeah! Oh, yeah, Bill Russell! Oh, my God! Boo! He's overrated! Boo! And I know what some of you guys are saying. And in fact, my friend Dan said this, and I couldn't believe it when he said it. <coughs> um, excuse me. He said... <laughs> this dude, he said Bill Russell would be like Ben Wallace if he played today. Yeah. I mean, the disrespect is just off the charts. And don't, don't get me wrong, I think you can imagine, and you might even know, that a stat-loving mofo like myself loves Ben Wallace. The rebounding numbers Ben Wallace put up were out freaking rageous. Like seriously, I, 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 astounding. But not even close to the rebounding that Russell put up. Okay? Now, there's some interesting things about Russell's statistics. First of all, they don't, there's no blocks. They didn't record blocks. 
but but stat weirdos like myself have gone back deep into the depths of the statistical archives and and the footage of this man playing basketball and you know you can say a lot of things i think like uh the height average height of the nba player was 3 inches shorter than it is today there's definitely you can say that you know, athleticism wasn't the same for a lot of different reasons, including advancements in training, et cetera, et cetera. You can say a lot of stuff. You can say it was there was less teams. There was less teams in Russell's day. When Bill Russell played, there were only like 10, 15 teams. Today, there's 32 teams. So you can say a whole bunch of stuff, right? But... I think by the end of this podcast, maybe I will convince you just a smidgen that this man deserves more of your respect, and he's a a statistical god. The man averaged 22.5 rebounds for his career. Now just, oh God, just think about that for a second. Now, yes, there are mitigating factors. I get it. We talked about Wilt's stats many moons ago. Insane, insane rebounding numbers, insane scoring numbers. But Russell is right up there with the rebounding. And again, we're going to get into the to, to the new blocks data that I found. Um, Russell, one of the detract the things that the detractors say is he didn't shoot very well. He is a, a career forty four percent shooter. Uh, they didn't. There weren't any threes. Um, so. We don't know what he would have shot from three, but he was never a sharpshooter. <clears throat> I mean, he shot, did not shoot well from the free throw line. Career, 56% free throw shooter. But he, he could drop some dimes, 4.3 assists per game, career. Uh, his high is coming in 64-65, 5.3 assists. Um, he didn't average less than 18.6 rebounds for any any year. Of his career, okay? He averaged 15.1 points per game for his entire career, all right? Um, his highest points per game was uh, 18.9 in 1961 62 season. Um, did I mention he has 11 championships? <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that. <laughs> I mean, people are just so disrespectful. It's insane. 11 rings and he had great teammates around him but he by all accounts he was the the engine for that machine but the interesting thing i found is the players so like people will say oh who did bill russell play against you know <clears throat> first of all the first thing i say back is wilt fucking chamberlain he battled him many times um they went at it in fact um, Oscar Robinson? Ever heard of him before? Huh? <laughs> Stopping such a smug bastard. Uh, Jerry West. One of the greatest shooters of all time. Uh, he's the logo, for God's sake. Um, talk about a great statistical career. Talk about a guy who would have shot well from three. Nikola Jokic. No, I'm joking. Elgin Baylor. Yeah, Elgin Baylor. And then the next guy is a guy that doesn't get a lot of respect. Bob Petit. Pettit? Did I say Petit? <laughs> I think it's Bob Pettit, right? The, the guy averaged 26 points, 16 rebounds, 3 assists uh, per game. First career. So, and he battled Russell a lot. Um, in fact, he, he actually is a, is a main character in Russell's playoff career. Um, and I found this really interesting article on the site called A Sip of Sports. And it goes through Russell's Game 7s. And I'm going to share with you some of this because, man, it's fascinating. In the 1957 NBA Finals, in a double overtime Game 7, he faced off against Bob Petit. <laughs> Bob Pettit. Sorry, man. Uh, 
Bob Pettit had 39 points and 19 rebounds in that game. Russell, because that's here, Russell fouled out trying to stop Pettit at the end of regulation, a physical matchup that defined the series. The Celtics were able to win in a second overtime without Russell. The Hawks would win the NBA title in the next year over Boston, four games to two. So these Hawks were like, they beat they beat Boston before in the finals. So it's just like, it, it, there are some great teams in that era. We're, we're going to get into the, the Lakers, okay, with, with Wilt and, and Jerry West on the same team. Sorry, I'm trying not to curse as much, but I'm just trying to make a point. Russell's numbers in that game that I just talked about on April 13th, 1957, 19 points and 32 rebounds. 32 rebounds. Unreal. <clears throat> Squeeze me. Um, April 1st, 1959, Eastern, Con- Eastern Conference Finals. Boston against the Syracuse Nationals. Boston, 130. Syracuse National Nationals, 125. The Celtics trailed by as many as 16 points in the first half before rallying to win. Russell's numbers, almost identical from the last game. 18 points and 32 rebounds. April 9th, 1960 NBA Finals. Boston 122, St. Louis Hawks 103. This was the only blowout in all of Russell's Game 7s. Again, he faced off against the great Bob Pettit. Russell's numbers, 22 points and 35 rebounds. Will you just stop? This is crazy. April 5th, 1962, Eastern Conference Finals, Boston, 109, Philadelphia Warriors, 107. Guess who was on the Philadelphia Warriors? Wilt Chamberlain. (laughs) The first of four meetings between Russell and Wilt Chamberlain in Game 7s. So if you're going to sit here and say all these bad things about Russell, he faced off against Wilt Chamberlain, in four game sevens. Let's find out how he did. Chamberlain, along with Russell, deserved to be in the discussion of all-time greats in basketball, this this article says. And I agree. Uh, their numbers and records are far superior than that of Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, and Larry Bird. Good point. Um, and they get left out of the conversation, which is kind of insane. They really do. Um, the Celtics le- led late in this game seven, but Chamberlain scored five straight points to tie the game at 107 with only seconds remaining. Then Sam Jones, Celtics great, hit a jumper in the final seconds to secure an advance to the NBA Finals. And they would win that Finals in a seven game series against the Lakers. So it's like. It wasn't a cakewalk, man. There were a lot of good teams. Even that small the small pool of teams, a lot of good teams, and there were a lot of good players on those teams, like all-time great players. Russell's numbers in that game, 19 points and 22 rebounds. So, like, he's routinely getting over 20 rebounds in all these games. Okay, even with the, the inflated stats that you're going to claim exists during this time, that is freaking insane. It's just crazy. Um... And, you know, reading over all this stuff, I was really intrigued by uh, Bob Pettit. Like, I I didn't know that much about him. Amazing player. I think he was on the BS Report a long time ago. I listened to him, an interview with him. Interesting guy. Um, So, in the aforementioned uh, Lakers series, um, April 18th, 1962, that was the next series after the one I just mentioned, Game 7, Boston, 110 Lakers, 107 in OT, in overtime. So after defeating Wilt in that dramatic Game 7 before that, they have to go against Elgin Baylor, all-time great. And we'll do what we're going to do a... We're, we are going to do an, an Elgin Baylor gaudy stats podcast. He has some gaudy stats, man. And in this series, in the Game 7, Elgin Baylor... Had 40 points and 22 rebounds. Huh. Oh, God. 
That's so gaudy. Oh, man, I need to just take a breath here. These, these stats are just outrageous. He averaged 27.4 points per game for his career, 13.5 rebounds, and 4.3 assists. So he was getting those rebounds, but he was a small forward. How big was Austin Baylor? How big was this dude? Because 22 rebounds. 40 points and 22 rebounds? 6'5"? What? He's 6'5". That's crazy. Okay, I, I, I'll come back to him another time because that's, that's a rabbit hole if I ever saw one. <sighs> Overtime game. Bill Russell in this game finished with 30 points and 40 rebounds. These stats, folks, are so damn gaudy that uh, I'm having trouble thinking straight right now. And uh, I want to apologize if the words that come out of my mouth are gobbledygook because I'm looking at these numbers and I don't believe they exist. But they do. This is real stuff. Real stuff here. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... <laughs> 30 points, 40 rebounds. Okay, so then April 10th, 1963, Eastern Conference Finals. Boston 142, Cincinnati Royals 131. He's going against Oscar Robinson, who scores 43 points. But guess what? Sam Jones had 47, and Bill Russell had 20 points and 24 rebounds. Did the Celtics just let him get all the rebounds? Did they just like clear out? Did Russell just like tell everybody like if if you see me out of the corner of your eye, get the f out of the way, and I'll take that rebound from you, buddy. God damn! April fifteenth, nineteen sixty five, Eastern Con- Eastern Conference Finals, Boston one ten, those Philly seventy sixers one oh nine. Guess who's going up against, again, Wilt the Stilt. Yes. The two centers played to a standoff, it says here. Sam Jones, 37 points, again, clutch in those game sevens. John Havlicek was also on that team, great player. Russell's numbers, 15 points, 29 rebounds, and 8 assists. Will Chamberlain, 30 points and 32 rebounds. 30-30. Jesus Christ. April 28th, 1966, NBA Finals. Boston, 95. Lakers, 93. Kind of a slugout game. It was uh, Boston's coach, Red Arbach's last game. Jerry West. He was going against Jerry Jerry West in this game. Had 36 points. A frantic charge at the end to come back. And it wouldn't be enough. God, it won by two points. Another NBA Finals. Russell. 25 points and 32 rebounds. This is just getting old now. I mean, like these rebounds are just freaking crazy. April 19th, 1968. Eastern Conference Finals. Boston 100. 76 or 96. You notice some of those scores were like, like looked like they were just up and down track meet, high scoring in the in the 120s, in the 130s. These are these are some slug out scores. 100 to 96. Boston wins again. Celtics rallied from being down three games to one in this series. So they were down three to one, kind of like what happened. Well, not kind of like what happened with LeBron and the. The Cavaliers against the Warriors, or what happened once the series before that, the Warriors come back against the Thunder, which was the impetus of getting Durant to the Warriors. But I digress. They won Game 5 in Philly, Game 6 in Boston, and closed it out in Game 7 in Philly. Wilt had 14 points and 34 rebounds. Russell had one of his poorest performances, they say. (laughs) 12 points and 26 rebounds. So he wasn't a, he wasn't the greatest scorer, but he could put those rebounds up and he could score sometimes, probably a lot of dunks or like, you know, layups, things like that. Didn't have a lot of range. 
the first so, so this is crazy. May 5th, 1969 NBA Finals. This was Bill Russell's last game and he was actually 35. So he's 34 in the regular season, 35 in the playoffs or in the finals. <clears throat> Excuse me. Boston 108, Lakers 106. Game 7 against one of the first big 3s, Elgin Baylor, Will Chamberlain and Jerry West against Russell and his crew. And it's it's widely acknowledged that Bill Russell was the best player on the teams he was on. So we can just go ahead and say that. I mean, he was the best player on these Celtics teams that won 11 championships. Okay? All right, so this year is interesting. The Celtics were only 48-34 and 34 during the regular season. The Lakers traded for Wilt Chamberlain at the beginning of the season. So they had Wilt, Jerry, and Elgin. Um, the Lakers were big favorites for only the second time the Russell the, – the Russells <laughs> – the Celtics were playing away from Boston in Game 7. And they, they say here, and it's true, it would be one of the most famous games in NBA history. The Celtics took a 15-point lead into the fourth quarter. Lakers began a furious comeback led by Jerry West, who had 42 points. Chamberlain went down with a hurt knee midway through the fourth quarter. Mel Counts came in to replace him. Lakers continued their rally. Chamberlain wanted to re-enter the game, but Lakers coach... Butch Van Bredekolf, what? <laughs> that name is, is crazy. Refused to insert him. Lakers fell two points short. In the last minute of the game, Don Nelson, the great coach for the Mavericks, the Golden State Warriors, uh, and also now a huge pothead, hilarious, uh, would hit his famous lucky shot, which I don't know what the F that is. But in that game, Russell had only five points, but 21 rebounds. So, tail end of his career. Uh, he had 10 game sevens, and eight were played in Boston. Only two of the games were decided by more than five points. His average for the 10 game sevens was 18.8 points and 29.3 rebounds. His victims were all of the greatest players of his era. Will Chamberlain, Bob Pettit, Elgin Baylor, Jerry West, Oscar Robinson. Crazy. I mean, so just, just, those are all top 50 guys, Hall of Famers. Some of them upper echelon, Will Chamberlain, Jerry West, and Oscar Robinson. And you could even say Elgin Baylor. All up, all upper echelon Hall of Famers. I mean, those guys... Holy crap. So, he did it when it mattered, and he also put up the stats when it mattered. Um, let's just run down his rebounding totals real fast, or, re, or, or average averages per year. 19.6, 22.7, 23, 24, 23.9, 23.6, 23.6, 24.7, 24.1, 22.8, 21.0. 18.6 and 19.3 rebounds for, as I said, 22.5 rebounds a game for his career. So this man is like a rebounding god. And one of the most frustrating things that I hinted at earlier is that we don't have block and steal data for these guys. Now, I mentioned he had 4.3 career assists per game average, which is good for a center, very good. But I'm just curious about the steals and the blocks. And I've read a few articles about this, and they didn't keep the official stat. But oftentimes in the recaps of the games, the, the reporters would reference like, oh, Russell blocked 15 shots, Wilt blocked 12 shots, blah, blah, blah. We talked about um, in the Wilt pod about the games because they did start recording blocks for a very short time. I think it was like 100 games or something like that when Wilt was still playing, and he averaged 8.8 blocks per game at the tail end of his career. I mean, so, okay. And, his, and these, guys, these guys played crazy amounts of minutes, too. Russell averaged 42.3 minutes per game for his career. He maxed out one year, 1961-62, 
45.2 minutes a game. So they, they were on the court all the time, getting all those rebounds. Um, a good reason why perhaps they got so many rebounds. But they're getting a lot of rebounds, accumulating a lot of stats. Um, I think I think six blocks is like the baseline for Russell. And he probably got a lot more. The blog, Celtics 247, 247. <laughs> 247, wonder what that stands for. Um, look, they looked over a bunch of archive footage, and they determined that Bill Russell averaged 7 to 9 blocks per game and achieved at least three triple-doubles during the 1968 finals. And he, and he averaged a triple-double in that series, too. Just just outrageous. So so now we know he averaged around 60, 7 to 9 blocks per game. For his career. Seven to nine blocks. Um, I mean, just imagine if somebody was putting up, like, just, okay, so one year, let's see. So, if somebody today was putting up 15 points, 24 rebounds, uh, almost five assists, and seven blocks per game. How many five times fives do you think Bill Russell got? God, how many five times fives did Wilt get? Because I've been reading a lot of articles, and Wilt supposedly would go after every shot. He would just love the spectacle of slapping the ball into the stands. Russell would be a little more calculating. He would let people shoot earlier in the game. Later in the game, they'd think they could get that shot off, and he'd just come up and just swat that shit. Or he'd grab it out of the... He liked to grab it out of the air and keep the ball. Very, very smart player. Like you see now, a lot of players will just hit it out, out of bounds. He would be, he really would try to keep the ball in bounds, control the block. Just genius stuff, man. Um, my goodness. Uh, God, Wilt's, Wilt's stats are crazy too. Just getting a little glance at some of those. I'd forgotten. God, if he, if he was playing today, putting up, I mean, I think Wilt realistically could have put up. 30, 35, and 20. He could do like a 30, 20, average of 30, 20 today. I really believe that. If you look at some of the numbers he put up, 30, 20, I think is doable. Because what you have to understand is these guys would be working out like crazy today. They'd be all jacked. They would be just as in shape as, you know, Kevin Durant, Steph, all these people, you know, Kawhi Leonard, all these athletes today we have that are like finely tuned specimens. These guys would be just as finely tuned. And Wilt was agile enough where he could run the floor. He would be an amazing uh, five today. He, he was much quicker. People get him cre- give him credit for. I think Russell was too. Um, they were still big. They were still, you know, plotters to a certain extent. But they were also, you know, they, they played great defense. They could move their feet. Um, God, it would be fun to see them. They were so big. Like, Wilt was so damn huge though. Was it seven three? It's crazy to think about seven one. Man. Uh, so that's really it. I mean, that's Bill Russell for you. Um, he did work, folks. Eleven championships too. Just want to throw that out there. He has more championships than he has fingers. He's got to put one on his little pinky toe. Oh, pinky toe ring. Yeah? That's a, that's a good look. <laughs> um, oh, God. Have you guys been watching the playoffs? Man, I, I'm so enveloped in the playoffs this year. Uh, I love watching Kawhi play for some reason. I didn't used to love watching him play. I just like the way he plays. He plays like a robot. His threes are like line drives. They're either like way off or they like swish. It's just... And I love watching Giannis. Um, I live in Portland. I hope the Trailblazers can win tonight. It's game three. At home. Uh, they got to win this game. They got to win this game. Um, these Warriors are playing so well without Kevin Durant. I, I really hope KD leaves. I'm so tired of him. Just go, man. I love watching him play. Don't get me wrong. I'm tired of the whole... just the. The drama and the Warriors are so much more fun to watch without him. Everyone's saying that though; it's nothing new. But it's just it's it's one of those obvious things. It's a mainstream thing. You see it, and it's just like, yeah, this is perfect. This ball movement, 
this uh these this three point barrage from Clay and Steph. It's just God, how disheartening. These sharpshooters just sniping away from from distance. The ball handling of Steph is outrageous. Man. I want to see Tiny Archibald go up against Steph. That'd be kind of nice. I want to see... It's just me. There's not as many like great point guards today in today's game. I want to see... like I wish... you know, the, There was a while there where it was like, oh, it's the golden age of point guards. You have... You had Steve Nash, Chris Paul, and Darren Williams. Remember when Darren Williams got thrown in there? Like he was like as good as Chris Paul and Steve Nash. That always annoyed the shit out of me. Um, and you know what? It annoyed me so much that I'm going to look up his stats right now. Just, just curious. He only averaged 20 points, over 20 points, three times. He did put up some nice assist numbers there. He did. 10.5, 10.7, 10.5, 10.3. That was when he was playing with Utah. But he kind of fell off a cliff at a certain point. Um, he did shoot a good percentage in those Utah years. He was very efficient. Kind of a hater. He was good. He was a good player. He was efficient. Um, wasn't wasn't as good of a three-point shooter. He's a career 35.7% three-point shooter. But, you know. You know how I am with three-point shooting. I get really very critical, and I get super picky about my point guards. Um, but enough Darren Williams talk. I mean, this is about Bill Russell. This is about greatness. And no offense to Darren Williams, I can't I can't put him in that great category. He's in the hall of very good, as my uh, my friend the Kempster once said. Um, and did Skip Bayless say that too? Wait, Kemp, did you steal that from Skip Bayless? I think he did. I think I, I uh, at one point I heard Skip Bayless say that. So uh, now my, one of my friends is parroting Skip Bayless. It's good to know. Um, Darren Williams was a five-time All-Star. Just FYI. Um, did you know Bob Pettit was an All-Star every single year he was in the NBA? 1954 to 55, all the way to 1954, 64 to 65. Um, he wasn't in the league long, but man, he put up. Phew, he was on fire when he was in the league. As I just said, 26, 16, and three. Who knows how many blocks and steals? 76 percent free throw shooter. These guys didn't shoot very good field goal percentage, and I read an article that said that was because. People just didn't shoot as well. So there's lots of rebounds too, perhaps. Maybe that's why Russell was just getting all his rebounds. Who the hell knows? Um, Pettit did have a year where he averaged 20 rebounds a game. 1960-61. Interesting player. He retired when he was 32. Um, all right. Well, enjoy the, well, enjoy the playoffs. Um, NFL's coming up. Well, not coming up. I mean, it's like... God, how far away is NFL? May, May, June, May to June, June to July, July to August. We got like four months, folks. But you might hear a, a preview pod coming up. You just might, because I am completely in the dark. I have I don't know what the hell's going on with the NFL right now. I don't know about any of the news, any of the free agents. All I know is that Jordy Nelson retired. Jordy Nelson, who I, always, I love watching him play, injury prone at times, but I'm kind of upset that he retired. I wanted him to go back to the Packers and get some more receptions. I feel like he could, he'd be a good like seven reception, sixty yard guy. You know, you can count on count on those receptions. There aren't that many of those guys left in the league, to be quite honest. Um, guys, you can you can rely on for those. You know, like not I'm not talking about big gaudy numbers. I'm talking about like eight receptions for fifty yards. <laughs> Disgusting slot slot receiver, running back, uh re- receiving running back numbers. A lot of receptions, very little yards, no touchdowns. And I, I just love that, as you know. Um or you might not know. I don't know. I'm just I'm just I'm just fucking talking. I'm I'm doing some mealy mouth bullshit. I am uh kind of tired i think i'm getting weak i need to eat some food um i made the mistake of doing this pod before i eat a feast i'm gonna 
make some freaking food for this Trailblazers game. I was going to meet a friend at a bar, but I'm no longer going to do that. Instead, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to I'm going to get myself a little bevy. I'm going to get a little huh, little and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to watch this game. I'm going to get deep into it. I'm going to do a mind meld with a TV. It's going to burn a hole in my brain. And I'm going to watch this game. And I'm excited because I want to see the Trailblazers shock the world. They played a great game last game. They almost pulled it off. But then Steph got hot. This this Warriors team is completely different than when they have K, when they had KD. I mean, it's just true. They completely they play completely different. They look different. They look happier. They're more... They just... It, I feel like it's going to be a happy breakup. Katie's going to leave. He knows. They know. It's cool. Everybody knows now. It's fine. Katie has to leave. This Warriors team has to revert back to what they were. And they have to start finding an Iguodala replacement because Iguodala is not going to hold up a whole season playing these kind of minutes. But anyways, um, and they'll get some more bench guys. If they get rid of Durant, they'll, they'll bring in some more shooters. I can't wait to see what they do. Um, it's just tough, man, because they're playing like a unit – the, they play with each other for so long. The Blazers are fighting, but there's just some matchups they can't. Like, Draymond is, is wreaking havoc defensively. Like, he is playing. His playoff performance so far has been amazing. Um, just gaudy numbers. Gaudy defensive stats. Francis last game. Let's see. 16 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, and 5 blocks. In the game before that, he had 3 blocks and 2 steals. He's getting he's getting double digit rebounds consistently. He's gotten double digit rebounds in the last seven games. Draymond has. Um, he's averaging for the postseason twelve nine seven one point seven and one point one one point one being steals one point seven being blocks. He's getting close to a triple dub. Um, and he's hit some more threes though. That man still cannot hit a three save his life. I mean he's he's hit some threes. But he's shooting 20% from the three in the playoffs. I mean, come on, man. 52% from the field, though. He's playing efficient. He's playing good. 37 minutes a game, too. He's really getting up there in minutes. They're really emptying out the minutes on these on these uh, on their starters. Um, but, God, I'm still thinking about that 30-point, 40-rebound game by Russell. If a player put up 40 rebounds in a game now, it would just it would go, like, Instagram, Twitter. It would just be freaking insane. 40 rebounds, guys. Like, just for F's sake. And, you know, I, I was thinking about rebounding a lot when I was watching the Houston Golden State series. with P.J. Tucker, man. P.J. Tucker was killing it. I love watching that. He, the Suns had him, and they let him go like some freaking idiots. Like, he's just, wouldn't you love to have him on your team, P.J.? And you look at his, like, his uh, career, it's so funny. He came into the league in 2006, 2007. Then for, God, for like his his prime years, 22 to 26, ages 20, age 22 to 26, he's playing in like Israel, Ukraine, Ukraine, Israel, Greece, Italy, Germany. It's, it's crazy. Um, but in these playoffs... Let's just... I just want to see... What he has done in these playoffs because he seemed like he was just all over the place, getting lots of rebounds and just just killing it. Um, against Golden State, he had some nice games. Uh, damn! In all but two games, he had ten over ten rebounds. This guy's like six six four six five. Um, he shot pretty well from three too. Zero for three. Three for five, three for six, um, three for. F- Let's see, damn, he shot forty-eight percent from three for the series. PJ Tucker, eleven, eleven points. Sorry, ten point eight. God, my brain is just dying right now. Ten point eight points. 8.2 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals, and 0.7 blocks. So, there you go, man. I mean, this guy, he's, I love P.J. Tucker. Wish the Suns had kept him. So stupid. But anyways, we'll see what happens tonight. Mo Harkless needs to step up. Um, he's been playing well, but he needs to keep... And, dude, oh, man. Like, they... Everything came together for him last game. Some guys hit some big shots that don't normally. 
hit some big shots. Myers Leonard, I think he had like 10 points or something. I don't know. He had some key screens and was hitting shots. It's going to take an effort, a huge effort, but they're capable of winning this game uh, for sure. But as we know, if they if they lose this game, that's they're, they're down 3-0. Forget about it. Um, anyways, enough blabbing. I am going to get up out of this chair. I, I made it like an imprint in, in the bottom of this chair. I've been sitting in it so long. Uh, God, I smell horrible. I stink. I need to clean myself up. I need to eat some food. I need to feed my brain. Uh, the, the the small amount of brain cells that I have left, I need to feed those. I think I'm going to do like, I got all these fish sticks in the freezer. And this is going to sound gross to some of you guys, but I love fried fish. I'm going to take these fish sticks from the freezer. I'm going to put them on a pan. I'm going to cook them in the oven. I'm not going to fry them. I, I can't. I, I'm, trying to eat le- I'm trying to eat less fried food. I'm not going to fry them. But they're already fried. They're pre-fried. So I'm going to cook them in the oven. They're going to be nice and crispy. And like, like I'm like five years old or seven years old, I'm going to eat them with some ketchup, okay? I'm not a little boy. I'm 35 years old. But I'm going to eat these fish sticks with some ketchup. I don't know what else I'm going to have. That might be it. Maybe some chicken nuggets. My friend's Gordo ate 75 chicken nuggets. Gordo, if you're listening to this, it's insane, man. What's your resting heart rate, bro? <laughs> Be careful, man. I love you. Don't don't die of uh, by nugget, okay? Be careful. But I'm also very impressed, and I'm also hungry, and I want to eat some nuggets myself. So who am I to judge? I'm not judging. I'm jealous. I want some nuggets. Where are my nuggets? I do have some frozen, frozen nuggets, actually. I'm going to be eating those, too. I'm thinking 12 fish sticks, like six nuggets, something like that. Nothing compared to 75 nuggets. My God, I'm still impressed by that. Um, I gotta go, man. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.